Hello everyone, it's Brandon from the Pilot Stud channel. I hope you're all doing well. In today's Flight Sim video, I'm taking a look at some legacy hardware that you can use on both Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 and 2020, of course. I'm talking about the Logitech flight panels I've got sat behind me. I've showcased them on my channel before, albeit about five years ago. So let's take another look at them today. Let's see how they work in the new sim. I'll be showing you how to set them up how to get them working to their very best, going through any bugs or problems I experience, and reaching a conclusion on whether or not they're worth it in any modern flight sim setup. So without further delay, let's take a good look at them. So for a bit of background, SciTech released their Pro Flight lineup about 15 years ago in 2010. Since then, they've been overtaken by Logitech. It used to be that you could buy your panels directly from Logitech, but now it looks like that's unavailable here in the UK, so you have to buy them off tech suppliers such as Curry's PC World or indeed Amazon. The Pro Flight lineup includes the radio panel which allows you to control aircraft radios, who would have guessed, from your communication radios to your navigation radios to the ADF which is automatic direction finder and DME which is distance measuring equipment to your transponder which as you'll find out is a lifesaver. They've also released the multi-panel which allows you to control basic autopilot as well as trim, flaps and an auto throttle switch and the switch panel which contains aircraft lighting as well as general aviation themed buttons such as magnetos and cow flaps. That's a very brief overview of the panels available. They do offer a few more, such as an instrument panel, but because they've been out for so long now, I'd recommend you take a look on somewhere like eBay. You can get some pretty good deals. These, these panels all retail direct from suppliers uh, from about 75 UK pounds all the way up to 120. Have a look on eBay and you can get these for around 50 quid, which is an absolute bargain. Now to install them, it's quite easy. You're going to want to come ahead to the Logitech website uh, which is linked down below. Now it's not entirely self-explanatory because support seems to do nothing now. So come up to the top right corner, down to the support centre, and you're going to want to search for flight panels. I've linked that link down below, but just to help you find it, it is quite easy. Just search it up like so, and then come over to any of the panels because all the software is the same. The website is a bit buggy, but down the left hand side here, click downloads and the first plugin you will see is the one you want for both Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and 2024. Go ahead and download that, but before we get that installed, a top tip, come up here and swap over to Windows 10. Scroll down slightly and you'll see the flight panels test software. Download this because it will, it will allow you to see the functionality of your radio panel, of your multi-panel, of your switch panel, checking all the LEDs, making sure they're all working and that everything is good to go before you load up your flight simulator. So here we go, we've got both of the applications sat here. You're going to want to go ahead and run these as administrator. Um, I will show you how it installs the plugin. I've done it before, of course, but no harm showing you again. Agree to the terms and conditions and it installs in a matter of seconds. Now if I go ahead and search for Logitech, it should bring up the Microsoft Flight Simulator plugin. Importantly, leave it alone for the moment. Don't go ahead and run it. Start up your simulator and then hopefully the magic will happen. Once you've started up your simulator, go ahead and run the Logitech Microsoft Flight Simulator plugin as administrator and whether you be on 2020 or 2024, the screens should illuminate and you should be good to go. I say should be good to go because it's not perfect. On 2024, there is some bugs as I'll be talking about towards the end of this video. But first off, let's head on the old simulator and talk about how it is on there. Now, on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, it pretty much works out of the box, as it has done for the last five years. The one exception is with some payware aircraft such as the Phoenix A320 and PMDT 777. There is a workaround of that and members of the community have been very helpful. Uh, there's an application out there called SPAD.next, which I'll be talking about towards the end. That will allow total compatibility with the simulator, but until then, if you're using the default plugin, Plugin. expect some issues when you go onto payware or add-on aircraft. That being said, as you can see here, it works absolutely fine on the standard aircraft, on the default aircraft. Really no issues here. For me, the radio panel is a big, big winner. 
The multi-panel, because I use the Bravo Throttle Quadrant, isn't as important, but it's nice to see it works if I want to use uh, some basic autopilot controls. But moving over to 2024, how does it perform? Well, using the old Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 plugin, it seems to work perfectly with the default aircraft, but sadly, we've got the same limitations that it doesn't work too well with some payware aircraft. Importantly for me, at least, the radio panel seems to have no issues even with payware aircraft, so it looks like developers have caught on to the fact that many people still have this bit of hardware in their arsenal, so they've ensured compatibility. That being said, the autopilot controls on the multi-panel, at least out of the box, do not seem to work with the Phoenix A320 and have limited compatibility with the PMDG 737 and 777. So, so far so good. You can see everything's working in the sim uh, on default aircraft. When it comes to payware aircraft, you will need to get an additional application, as I'll speak about in the moment, uh, in a moment even. But that being said, let me talk about some common issues that I've experienced with my time using these panels. Now, first off, I'd recommend you get a powered USB hub, especially if you've got a few flight sim peripherals connected up to your PC. That is now actually drawing quite a bit of energy from your PC, and these panels seem to be quite energy intense. So if you're noticing any screen flickering, try a USB hub, preferably powered, of course there's no point in having one. Now speaking of power, power management is important and with USB peripherals, Windows may enable automatic power management. So go ahead and head over to device settings, go into properties and disable automatic power management. This will disable Windows from being able to turn off your panels from when it thinks it's not using it. It's a common cause of no information being conveyed on the screens of either the multi-panel or the radio panel. Additionally, with the Bravo Throttle Quadrant, I noticed when I first started flying on 2020, there were some issues. It was doing some really crazy things. Like when I was clicking my right button on my mouse, it was making all the screens flicker. That is because of an Avionics Master binding uh, on the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. So go ahead and disable that if that's causing you issues. And of course, Add-on aircraft connectivity, it's a big one, it's really important seeing as most of us fly add-on aircraft. Unfortunately the solution is a bit more money, you're going to need to spend about 25 quid on a wonderful application called SPAD.next and that gives you total control over the panels because there's no way to change the controls in the sim. So you're going to need to use SPAD.next which is a much more enhanced plugin. As you can see on the screen, there's a way to download profiles for plenty of add-on aircraft. And from my testing, not that I use it too often because I only use my radio panel, which works fine. But from my testing, this allows you to fly without any problems. It's really good to see. It's totally customizable. Even if you want to make your aircraft do something silly when you press the autopilot bug, like, I don't know, flip off the engines, it looks like you can even make it do stuff like that. Not that you need to, but that's the level of customization. It gives you total control of the Logitech panels. In terms of troubleshooting, the best thing that seems to work for me is just simply turning the plugin on and off. Go ahead into Task Manager and disable the Logitech plugin and then go ahead and run it as administrator again. For the most part, that will solve all my issues. Anything above that, unfortunately, you're going to need to try the SPAD.next. Uh, I say unfortunately, it's a really good bit of software and obviously some great time has been spent working on it. It works really well and even on flightsim.to you can download SPAD.next profiles for add-on aircraft. At the end of the day, would I recommend the Logitech or SciTech flight panels? Well, for me, it's easy. I would recommend the radio panel, but for the other panels, my answer is probably no. Honeycomb options are slightly better. They're a lot less uh, faff. They're so much easier to use. They look more realistic and feel more realistic. That being said, if you can find any of the Logitech panels secondhand for cheap, they're definitely a good option, and the radio panel is absolutely superb. The multi-panel on the Switch panel I don't use anymore, but I've been showing you how to install them for the sake of this video. They're a bit outdated, but they work when they want to work, and they can elevate your flight sim experience. So hopefully this has been a really good video if you want to get your flight sim panels up and running.
So there we have it, everyone. I hope you found this video informative and somewhat entertaining, uh, sharing my thoughts on the Logitech or SciTech flight panels. I certainly think they've got a place in any good flight sim setup. The uh, radio panel especially makes life so much easier when flying an online network, so I'm just buzzing about. Of course, as I said, if you've got anything like the Bravo Throttle Quadrant, stuff like the multi-panel or indeed the switch panel, which I've got sat in front of me, probably less useful, uh, but still serves a pretty good purpose. On that note, do be sure to leave your thoughts down below. Like and subscribe if you haven't done already. But I'll see you all very soon. Happy flying and bye-bye.